New York's first congressional district is becoming increasingly more important as Democrats look to take back control of the House this fall. Democratic congressional candidate John Avalon, a former anchor at CNN, is hoping to flip the Long Island swing seat currently held by Republican Nick LaLota. Congressman LaLota won the race in 2022 by 11 points just two years after President Biden managed to eke out a victory in the district by just 0.2 percentage points. And John Avalon joins us now. So why are you hey, running? Jason. I'm running because this is what I think we need to do. So this is a time for citizens to step up. Um, you know, as a journalist, I've always warned about dangers to democracy as writing you know, presidential histories. There are times where our country is in danger, and I think this is one of those times. And I didn't want to look my kids in the eye and tell them I could have done more when it mattered most. So time to get in the arena. So, John, uh, President Biden won by a very slim margin yes. in 2020 in that district. Nick LaLota, a couple of years later, won the Republican, won by 11 points. What are the trends in that yeah. district, and what are people talking about as you go out and shake hands? Look, it, it, first of all, LaLota is the first one of those Republicans who represent a district that Biden won to endorse him, right? So he's one of these, like, Trump flunkies, does whatever he says, far too far right for the district. He's a follower, not a leader. And I think that's out of step. Um, this is a swing seat. Um, that means there are a lot of, you know, moderate Republicans, those folks who are voting for Nikki Haley this time around, who I think are persuadable. They're independent voters who I think you can win a majority over if you fire up the base. And I think this election is going to be a very different model than 22, for example, when Lee Zeldin, the former congressman who held the seat, was running uh, for governor. And that's one of the things that made that now. Is it immigration, election. John, the economy? It, what do you hear most? It, it, immigration and crime are issues for sure. Uh, we saw that in, in Tom Swasey's race in neighboring yeah. New York three. Uh, but but here's what, you know, uh, you know, as I knock on doors, it's petitioning time. And so I'm knocking on doors in, in Northport and, and Brookhaven. And I, I spoke to one woman uh, named Beverly. Uh, and what she said really stood out because it was both typical and distinct. First of all, I said to her, I said, you know, what, what's driving you this election? She said, Donald Trump, he's dangerous. We got to stop him. He's a danger to our democracy. Then I said, what else? And she said the thing everybody else says, affordability. She said, I was just cut, you know, cutting coupons at my kitchen table to go to the grocery store later. But what she said was interesting. She said, you know, I'm frustrated. I don't know that it's just inflation anymore. Thinks, I think there's price gouging by, by, by companies. I don't know what it is. But I, I, that was an interesting sort of, you know, twist on, on what you hear as a constant complaint around housing, mm -hmm. health care costs. Affordability is the number one issue that people are feeling in Suffolk County. For so sure. as just mentioned, we've had a race on Long Island to replace the seat vacated yep. by George Santos. Tom Suozzi, Democrat, won. One of the things he did was really blame Republicans for the, the downfall of the <clears throat> border security bill. Yep. I, I assume that's in your playbook as 100%. well. What other lessons did you learn from that race? Look, I actually want to hit, hammer that home because it speaks to the hypocrisy and the cowardice and the cynicism that we see. And Nick LaLota, uh, the current congressman from the district, is, implicit, is complicit in it. You know, if you're going to make people afraid of the migrant crisis, and it's a real issue, no question, right? Then you got an obligation to fix it. And Republicans got the, the border security bill they wanted. Democrats would rather have comprehensive immigration reform. We know that's how to solve the problem. But Republicans said, no, for Ukraine, Taiwan, and Israel funding, you got to do border security standalone. And then, of course, Donald Trump walked in and said, nope, don't back this bipartisan bill. Toughest bill you'd ever see. Border Security Patrol wanted it. Nick LaLota tweeted, he mocked Senator James Langford, the conservative Oklahoma senator, for doing this. He said, my nine-year-old could have done a better job negotiating bedtime than Langford did on this bill. <laughs> and that's the kind of BS people are sick of. If you're going to inflame folks, if you're going to try to what, fear monger wait, wait, and fundraise, his nine-year-old could he actually said. negotiate a bill better than what Republicans say is the toughest border security bill. Maybe the nine-year-old should run because what <laughs> yeah. Langford did was nothing short of extraordinary. Yeah. And so, look, and, and this, what really infuriates folks is that they're not even putting up for a, a vote because they know it would pass. But when Lolota mocked it, yeah. I'm sorry, if you're going to fearmonger and fundraise off a problem and refuse to fix it, that's a firing offense. Yeah. yeah. Mike, it's so irresponsible. John, you've only been out there now, what, a couple of weeks? Two weeks. Two weeks. Yeah. And what do you hear in the, across the two weeks going door to door and walking around mm -hmm. the district about the two G's, the grocery store and the gas station, mm -hmm. that pay an important part in people's lives, added to the kitchen table where they sit down and write checks to pay off their credit card interest rates? Mm -hmm. 
What do you hear about those? And that, I always couch it as it's not about how much money you have. It's the absence of money in your lives. That Th that's right. Look, this is the fundamental issue. It's affordability. It's the middle class has been squeezed for decades, and folks are, are frustrated about it. And they got a right to be. You know, and so I think strengthen the middle class is one of the things that we need to do as a country. You know, they've been, it's not an accident to me that the middle of our politics have been hollowed out while the middle of our economy has been hollowed out. And they need to show that government can work for them again. I think we can do that with things like restoring the SALT deduction that was taken away, expanding the child tax credit. Um, I think we need more affordable housing that works in conjunction with communities to lower, to increase supply and lower costs. Folks are really feeling affordability crisis at home. And of course, there's climate change. There's a lot of concern about protecting women's reproductive freedom. Because if you're voting Republican, they're going to put back that national, national, uh, national you know, restrictions in place. So, but, but affordability is the key issue. And leaning into strengthening mm. the middle class and everything we can do to do that, that's what we need to be focused on. That's behind the fact that sleepwalking into you know, degradation of our democracy, we all got to be wide awake Absolutely. in America right now. So, so you, you're knocking on doors, yep. you're planting yard signs, shaking a lot of hands. It sounds like you've decided, uh, despite being in TV and being in media for a while, looks like you've decided that you're going to run a hardcore grassroots campaign. Got to do right? it. Got to do it. Look, you know, this is about meeting folks where they are. It's about doing the work. You've got to earn every vote. We've got a primary first, of course. You've got to earn and earn every vote and talk to mm -hmm. folks where they are. Um, that's the way you, that, that, look, democracy, decisions are made by people who show up. I'm going to show up. All Democratic right. congressional candidate, John Avalon, thank you, thank you very much. <laughs> thank you. Uh, John, you watching. You what's your website if people want to help out? JohnAvalon.com. I appreciate that's it. That's pretty John, easy. Just set up shop Claudio's in Greenport. Oh, in the oh. great place. And then if you want to talk to the younger families, go next door to Krabby Jerry's. Krabby <laughs> Jerry's? I know that yeah. well. Greenport. Okay. Yeah. Good advice. Coming